Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a polynomial equation, specifically a cubic equation. So we have 4n cubed plus 6n squared plus 4n plus 1 equals 0, and we're going to be solving this cubic equation. We're not going to use the cubic formula, if you want you can, obviously, that is going to be the third method, because I'll be presenting two methods here. My first method is changing the variable here a little bit. You know, substitution is a very powerful method, needless to say. You've seen many examples. Here's what I'm going to do. I'll multiply both sides of this equation by 2 first. And the motivation behind it is to get 8n cubed, because 8n cubed is the cube of something. So that's going to give me 8n cubed plus 12n squared plus 8n plus 2 is equal to 0. Since Multiplying by 2 doesn't really change the roots. It doesn't introduce any roots. It doesn't take away any of the roots. It is okay to do. The roots of this equation is going to be the same as the original one. Okay. Now, notice that 8n cubed can be written as 2n quantity cubed. Now, we want to do the same thing to all the terms. And obviously, all the coefficients are even here, so it's kind of good. I can now go ahead and write this as 2n quantity squared, but that needs to be multiplied by something. This gives me 4n squared, and I want to write, multiply that by 3 to make 12n squared. And then the same idea here applies. 2n must be multiplied by 4 to get 8n, and 2 is our constant. It's not going to change. Too bad. Now, I'm going to replace 2n with something. How about x? Is that good? Is that your favorite variable? Okay, so now I'm going to replace uh, 2n with x, and that's going to give me x cubed plus 3x squared plus 4x plus 2 is equal to 0. Now at this point, you might still be thinking like, how am I going to find the solutions? We're going to use, we're going to try to use the rational root theorem to find a possible solution. But one of the things that I want you to notice, and it's something that you should always check with polynomial equations, one of them is the sum of the coefficients. If the sum of the coefficients is zero, in other words, you have a polynomial and it's p of x. If p of one is equal to zero, that means the sum of the coefficients, then obviously x equals one is a solution. But we can also check this for x equals negative one. How does that work? You let you take a look at the coefficients of, obviously we have a one here, the coefficients of the odd powers and the coefficients of the even powers. If they add up to the same number, then x equals negative 1 is a solution. And yes, you guessed it right, x equals negative 1 satisfies this equation. You can kind of go ahead and check it out. Negative 1 cubed plus 3 times negative 1 squared plus 4 times negative 1 plus 2. This is going to give us negative 1 plus 3 minus 4 plus 2, and that is 5 minus 5, which gives us 0. So x equals negative 1 is a solution of this equation, which is really nice because we can reduce the power. Now, let's go ahead and arrange these terms to reflect that. So I can just, uh, you know, add x squared here. Notice that this is divisible by x plus 1, which means uh, x equals negative 1 is a solution, therefore x plus 1 is a factor. Then I can just break it down like 2x squared because it's 3x squared, but then it needs to be followed by 2x because I do need x plus 1, and then I do need a 2x because I had 4x, so on and so forth. So it's kind of better than uh, the, what's it called, the synthetic division or long division, but it does the same thing pretty much. So now you can factor by grouping, take out x squared, x plus 1, take out 2x, x plus 1, and then take out 2x plus 1. Great x plus 1 is a factor, obviously, and then the other factor is x squared plus 2x plus 2. Great. So x equals negative 1 is definitely a solution. We knew that. But what about the other solutions? They are complex, and, and you know our complex folks, uh, in order to make them happy so that they're not upset, we'll also find the complex solutions. Okay. So let's go ahead and set it equal to 0. And notice that this can be written as x plus 1 quantity squared plus 1 is equal to 0. From here, x plus 1 quantity squared can be written as negative 1. What number squared equals negative 1? It's either i or negative i. And from here, we get our lovely complex solutions. So one of them is going to be negative 1 plus i. And the other one is just going to be negative 1 minus i. So we get two complex solutions and one real that's pretty fair, right? Okay, three solutions. Great. So this is not our 
end goal, though, right? Our goal was to evaluate or find out the values of n, so we kind of have to back substitute. Remember, 2n is equal to x, so we're going to set these equal to 2n. So if 2n is equal to x and x is equal to negative 1, from here n becomes negative 1 half. And then if 2n is equal to x and that equals negative 1 plus minus i, allow me to write it that way, more compact. From here x is just going to be, I'm sorry, the n is just going to be, i was stuck on x here, uh, n is going to be uh, negative 1 plus minus i divided by 2. So basically get like three solutions using our first method. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. And second method, I believe you're going to find uh, more interesting. I don't know. Just let me know what you think. Um, we'll see how that goes. The second method goes a little different. All right. So let me rewrite our original equation. What was that? 4n cubed plus 6n squared plus 4n plus 1 is equal to 0. I don't know if you noticed when you first saw this equation, but this kind of looks like something. But something is missing. What is that? Oh, yeah, I know. Wouldn't that be nice, like, if we had n to the fourth power added to this, right? Okay, so this is missing a term. If we had the n to the fourth power here, then we would have something special. So you can't just add it out of the blue, right? So you have to add it on both sides. And if you do, you're going to get something nice. What do you get on the left-hand side? You get n plus 1 to the fourth power. So n plus 1 to the fourth power equals n to the fourth power. Forget about the fourth powers, and you can write n plus 1 equals n, and 1 equals 0. Uh-oh, that didn't go well, right? Obviously, this is not the way to do it. Well, there is different ways to proceed about it. Again, we can call this 2a and 2b. 2b or not 2b, that's the problem. So we can do the following. We can say, okay, let's go ahead and put everything on the same side. You know, for solving equations, putting things on the same side seems to be a good method. I think to getting 0 is a good thing. Now, I can think of this as n plus 1 squared squared, and this one as n squared squared. What does that mean? It means that we have a difference of two squares. Awesome. So we can factor that. a squared minus b squared can be written as a plus b, and then times a minus b. Okay, great. And then from here, we get the following nice equation. The, the left-hand side is not that nice, but part of it anyways. So you get n squared plus n squared. Well, here's the thing. Uh, this is not going to be 0 for real numbers because the sum of two squares cannot be 0, and they're you know, different n values, so on and so forth. But anyways, let's just expand it. 2n squared plus 2n plus 1 is one of the factors. The other one, n squared, is going to cancel out, and that's going to give us the lovely factor 2n plus 1 is equal to 0. This is where our real solution comes from. So if you set 2n plus 1 is equal to 0, you get n equals negative 1 half, which is what we found earlier. And from the, uh, the other equation, you're going to find the same n values that we found before. If you solve it by using the quadratic formula, n is just going to be negative 1 plus minus, let me just copy those using my cheat sheet, negative 1 plus minus i over 2 are going to be the uh, complex solutions. So that gives us basically the solutions. So this is kind of like a 2a approach. The 2b approach, 2b or not 2b, is slightly different. You can also go this route. Since uh, the fourth powers of two things are equal, we have two options. Either they are equal, which is nonsense because obviously n plus 1 never equals n, or uh, one of them is equal to the opposite of the other because what happens is you can also write this as negative n to the fourth power thanks to the even power. And from here you get 2n equals negative 1, n equals negative 1 half. You know the rest. And in addition to all of these things, you know what I would like to do? I'd like to show you a graph of this function because I'd like you to see what it looks like. And here it's a, here's a beautiful uh, cubic with only one real solution. And as you can see here, the single solution is going to occur at n equals negative 1. And this brings us to the end of the video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.